Are you using the right DAW for recording your music? Find out in the episode here. Hello everyone, welcome back to Make The Music. I do videos on music production, recreating songs, and how to get the best sounding music and productions in your home studio with the gear and equipment you have. Today, I wanna go over in this episode of the Ultimate Producer Podcast. Are you using the right DAW? Which one should you use for use your music production? Does it matter? Does it even matter at all? Are there different DAWs for different kind of workflows? I'm gonna go over that, all of that here. I have a guy called the Ultimate Studio Toolbox. You can get that in the description down below. It gives you a bunch of free tools and even DAW recommendations if you're looking to get equipment and things for your home studio and get yourself started making your own music. So go ahead and check out that guide in the description box down below and uh, that should help you on your journey. Anyways, I'm gonna discuss here what DAW should you use? Which one do I use? What do the pros use? And are there advantages and disadvantages to different digital audio workstations? That's what DAW stands for. So whether you're a beginner or someone more advanced, I think this is gonna be, this video is gonna have a lot of insight for you. So starting off, what is the DAW I use? I use a DAW called Reaper. And while it's technically free, you get a 60 day free trial. I highly recommend after that 60 day free trial, buying a license for only $60. So it's very, very affordable. Um, the people behind Reaper actually sold, I think a, a website domain 20 years ago. Um, so they're not really in it for the money. They just want to have enough coming in so they can continue to maintain the software. But I've been using Reaper for close to a decade now. I think about eight years I've been using Reaper, eight or nine years. So I've been using Reaper a long time. It's very versatile DAW. I think one of the pros of using a DAW like Reaper is its customization. I use a skin, I use a Pro Tool skin. I have a video on that here where I go over the different skins you can have for Reaper in of itself. And I use a Pro Tools 12 skin for it. So it looks and feels like Pro Tools, but actually functions like Reaper. I find it to be highly functional. It makes a lot of sense to my brain. A lot of people have said for the DAW Reaper that it has a bit of a steep learning curve, but once you get past it, you kind of become a pro in it. I think with every DAW, there's a steep learning curve. I think with every DAW, you have to learn the hotkeys, the commands and things like that before you can really start to get good with it. But what is the best DAW for you? I always tell people this, the best DAW is the one you have downloaded on your computer or laptop right now and you're using. Surprisingly, I know, right? Is that, is that a big surprise? The DAW you're familiar with is the best DAW for you because you're already experienced with it and you want to remove that roadblock between you and creating music, between you getting your ideas into the DAW and into an audio file. Because when I find with a lot of people, if they're constantly switching DAWs, thinking one's going to give them an advantage, all that happens is they spend all this extra time loading their plugins into the new DAW learning all the hotkeys, learning all the commands, and all it does is slow down their progress in terms of making music. For me, I consider many times switching to a DAW like Pro Tools or Logic, but when I realized the learning curve for me trying to relearn something when I'm already so fast in Reaper, it was just never worth it. But let's say that you're looking to switch DAWs or maybe you're a beginner, you don't know which one you want. I'm gonna go over some of the most popular DAWs, what their advantages and disadvantages are. I've basically used all of them at this point. Yes, I've used Reaper the most, but I've used each one to some varying degrees. So I have some experience in, in some of them and I've watched a lot of people describe the DAWs and why they like them. So hopefully this can be helpful for, helpful for you. Let's go to number one, what is considered to be the quote unquote industry standard. Although that is changing a bit over the next uh, few years, or I'd say over the last decade, using different w DAWs has become more acceptable. But Pro Tools is often considered to be the quote unquote industry standard. When you see Pro Mixers load up uh, mixing sessions, when you see the big guys like CLA, they have their sessions loaded up. Pro Tools is often considered to be the industry standard. You'll find it in a lot of studios. Why? Well, it was kind of the first to the market. That's one of the reasons why Pro Tools is considered the industry standard. Um, and I'll give some of my personal opinions on it, but it's widely regarded. It's well known in the entire industry. If you learn how to use Pro Tools, you can probably get to work in any studio because they'll likely have it. So it's very versatile in that sense. You'll be um, you'll be able to go from studio to studio uh, easily, especially if you're in the the big studio world. I think you'll be able to go from any of those locations and know what you're doing and be able to get a session loaded up. There's a lot of tutorials on it. There's a lot of templates out there for Pro Tools. That's what the pros are using. So if you see the pros do options or commands in Pro Tools, it'll be able to directly relate to what you're doing. So those are some of the big advantage of getting Pro Tools. To me, there's some downsides though. So I've personally used Pro Tools. I tried it out for a while when I thought I was going to switch. And in my opinion, it's not a very intuitive DAW. And I don't know if people have similar opinions, but to me, I didn't find the commands to be very intuitive or logical. Um, there's a lot of restrictions when it comes to Pro Tools. 
it's also quite expensive. If you're going to get the top Pro Tools license, 12, 13, I don't even know what they're on anymore. It's a very expensive yearly fee. And so it is definitely a premium DAW. And I think for a premium DAW, it should be a little easier to use. And in my opinion, it doesn't, it doesn't have the ability to switch the kinds of toolbars when you're editing tracks and you're moving tracks. You kind of have to do that manually, or you have to have a really extensive knowledge of hotkeys. And Reaper basically just determines which tool you're using when you're modifying audio. And I find that to be a lot better and a lot more user-friendly. And I find Pro Tools to be not the best DAW for production either. I think for mixing, it definitely holds its own. But in terms of creativity and production, I don't find that it's all that great at handling virtual instruments. Um, and, and so that was kind of my complaints when I was going to make the change to Pro Tools. But if you use Pro Tools right now, leave a comment down below. Why do you like it? Why do you keep using it? I'm sure there's some great reasons to do it. I'm not saying don't ever get Pro Tools. I was just my personal experience. And I know a lot of people have had an experience like that. But overall, I find the barrier of entry to be kind of high. I consider it to be expensive. So if you're looking to get into this as a hobby musicianist and create your music, I would recommend maybe don't go directly into Pro Tools, but if you're looking to be a seasoned pro who does mixes and productions and be taken very seriously in the industry, definitely take a hard look at Pro Tools. The next one people talk all about is Logic Pro. This is because it's very easy to acquire on a Mac system. So like I have a PC, I never really had the ability to use GarageBand or Logic at all. But uh, in my band, I have one of my bandmates, he uses Logic, so when we track, we use Logic. In my experience, Logic is a very good DAW. Um, it's very intuitive, I find the commands to make sense. It didn't take me too long to learn what I was doing. It comes with a ton of like stock virtual instruments and really good stock plugins. So um, there's a lot of good stocks there. Pro Tools does come with a good set of stock uh, plugins as well. But Logic really has some good virtual instruments. There's even virtual amps in there that I've seen. Um, and they have really good solid compressors, EQ, reverb, and even a virtual drums like program that they have in there. So you almost have everything you need when you get Logic. And it's not that expensive. I think if you have a Mac, Logic's like $300, which is, I think that's pretty good considering what you're going to spend on different plugins, you know, drum plugins, amp plugins. I think for it being the centerpiece of what your whole studio is going to revolve around, I think that's a very good investment. And I think it's definitely on the cheaper end when you compare it to something like Pro Tools. So if you're a Mac guy, um, you know, I would definitely check out getting something like Logic. Or if you're using GarageBand right, right now and you want to kind of expand what you're doing uh, currently, look into Logic. It's a very sound DAW. A ton of guys use it. Nolly uses it. Um, you know, it's, it's been used for a, a, by tons of people over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, I don't have any personal gripes with it. I think it's a pretty solid DAW. It does things different than Reaper, of course, but all DAWs are going to do things a little bit differently. And so I'm not going to use that as a complaint against it. Um, but I've been in it a little bit and it's fairly solid. So go ahead and check out Logic if you've got a Mac and you're interested in sort of upgrading your DAW situation. Another one of the major DAWs people talk about is Ableton Live. Ableton is much more specifically geared towards people producing music. So it has a very intuitive engine for if you're trying to work on loops or building out tracks and being able to modify audio in the production phase. I think it beats Reaper. I think it beats Pro Tools. And I think it beats Logic in all those regards. So if you're big into making modern pop stuff, hip hop stuff, building beats out, you're really into getting in depth in the music production thing. I would definitely check out Ableton. I think it's sort of medium in the price range, somewhere around Logic, uh, the latest edition. I haven't seen the latest price, but you know it was the couple hundred dollar range for sure. So it's a bit of an investment, but if you're really serious about producing your best sounding music and you're really more into the producing creative mindset and you're not super concerned about mixing, maybe you're gonna send the tracks off for someone else to mix, or maybe you just use a different DAW entirely when it gets to that. Um, Ableton does have built-in plugins, but I think uh, their plugin suite is is not quite as good as maybe some of the other DAWs. But when it comes to beats, virtual instruments, creating things and the whole creative process, I think Ableton is kind of king right now. A lot of people use it and I totally get why. It's it's a very solid DAW for that. So if you're more geared in that mindset, definitely check out Ableton Live. If you're using it right now and you mix in it as well, that's great. I wouldn't suggest changing it at all and I think it fits your workflow. When it comes to DAWs, it's really about finding something that fits your workflow. For me, I have Reaper because it's highly customizable. I can do basically anything in it. It's not particularly strong in one thing, I would say, but it's really solid at mixing. It's really good at producing. You, I can highly customize how it looks. 
it's easy for me to get plugins in there. And I've been using it for close to a decade. So I'm pretty much stuck with what I selected early on. But Ableton would be a great one to look into. Another one, which is actually Windows exclusive, so on the other side from Logic, is a DAW called Cubase, which I actually don't really have much experience in at all, but a ton of guys use it. A ton of guys love Cubase. It's a very logical DAW. It kind of has a little bit different approach where almost seems like DAWs like Pro Tools are sort of trying to emulate the whole analog thing in a way, just computerized. Uh, Cubase is sort of taking that whole digital aspect to another level in terms of how they do processing in the DAW. There's a lot of great stock plugins in Cubase. A lot of people say they like how the editing works in Cubase as well. And it's very easy to mix in. I must say, I don't have a ton of experience in Cubase, but it is a Windows version. It's not ultra expensive. So you have, if you have Windows and you want to kind of upgrade, you're not looking at Reaper and these other DAWs, but you want one that has a lot of high power that is very analytical to work with. I, I would definitely check out Cubase. It's a pretty solid DAW. Um, there's a lot of guys that use it in the industry, a lot of great tutorials on it. A lot of sort of the Joey Sturgis scene metal guys were using Cubase uh, back in the 2010s. So it's very solid, it's upkeep. They have they constantly have new versions, so don't worry about it You know, becoming old or anything like that. I think it's very solid. So go ahead and check that one out as well. Another DAW that a lot of people talk about is Persona Studio One, which is of course by Personas. Um, to me, I haven't seen any particular advantage with Persona Studio One. It just seems to have a little bit different workflow than something like Logic. It seems to be a little bit more closer to something like Logic, but I know there's a lot of good stock plugins in it. Guys like Joe Gilder use Persona Studio One and find that to be a very effective DAW for them. Um, I must say like my knowledge kind of runs out when it comes to every DAW, but that is another major DAW. I would check that out if you're looking at Persona stuff. If you have Persona's interface, if you bought that, or you have other Persona's gear, I would recommend go ahead and checking that out because I'm sure that's going to integrate very well with some of their other stuff. Now I'm going to vouch for my favorite DAW, which is Reaper. And there's a lot of reasons why I like Reaper so much, but um, I think with Reaper, it comes to the community, the ability to create patches, the affordability, it's only $60 for a license for the newest version. And the customization of Reaper is just unmatched by any DAW. And because of the community involvement for creating skins for Reaper, um, I can make Reaper look like any DAW I want based on what creative mindset I'm in. And so I think that's super helpful and super useful. Reaper comes with a pretty good suite of stock plugins. Um, I would say maybe if they added a few more, we could kind of get updated and competitive with the rest of the DAWs. I think one of the downsides of Reaper is it doesn't really come with a virtual instrument suite at all. So unlike Ableton, Logic, a lot of these DAWs come with virtual instruments now. Um, Reaper doesn't really do that. It doesn't really have any virtual instruments. So you kind of got to go out and find all that stuff or purchase it. So that would be one of the downsides. It's kind of a little more bare with that regard. but once you have virtual instruments with you, once you download maybe a couple of free plugins that's in my guides that you can find, Reaper is just such a nice blank canvas to work with because you can really customize your workflow to whatever you want. You can really move things around um, and create a space for you just to be ultra creative. But also with Reaper, if you don't wanna to touch any of that stuff and leave it customizable, you can go with the way stock things are set up and also get by just fine. So it's like, if you wanna go really deep, you can. If you wanna be crazy and set up your DAW in a weird way like me, you can totally do it. Or if you just wanna stick with something that's easy and intuitive to use, you can also do that with Reaper. So it really provides those two things as well. The developers are constantly updating the software where you get free updates. You literally, once you buy it, you can download the latest version or download old versions if you prefer an old version. I'm sure I have an old version of Reaper running on my DAW or running on my computer right now. But I would vouch heavily for Reaper, but all these DAWs are great options. And there's so many more. I'm sure there's so many more DAWs I'm forgetting. There's so many solid DAWs out there these days. And I think they're all worth exploring. But when it comes to choosing one for your home studio, you need to choose one that fits your workflow. So demo some out. A lot of them have free trials. Watch videos of people using them, describing why they use the ones they do. I describe why I use Reaper. But people vouch for all these other DAWs as well. Then pick one. Try it out for a little bit, make sure it fits you, and then stick with it and learn it. Just switching to another DAW is not going to make your workflow better or make your music better. I don't really think that's the case. It's really about committing to one and learning it inside and out to where you're not thinking about the DAW. You're not thinking about the commands. I think that's why also starting out and recording and producing music is so difficult is because not only 
are you getting into the producing thing and learning all this stuff about producing music, but also you're having to learn a new software. That's also a big challenge. Think about, for example, let's say a lot of you in the professional world use something like Microsoft Word. A lot of people know how to use that. You're not thinking about how to use Word while you're using it. You're getting the job done, right? But think about when you first started out using Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or some Google Slides, something of that nature, and how that added an extra layer of complexity to everything you were doing because you had to think about all the commands while you were doing it. It's the same thing with the DAW. Stick with one for a while, try and learn everything about it and try to make it so that it's no longer a barrier between you and creating your music. But if you get some time down the road and you go, okay, I know this DAW, but I want to switch because of these specific reasons. I want to improve my workflow. I want Ableton because I want to be more creative or I want Pro Tools because I want my mixing situation to be better. Then I think it's really good at that point to say, okay, I know why I want to switch DAWs and I'm going to do it. But don't jump DAWs, especially if you're paying hundreds of dollars just because, well, I kind of like this one, but my music will sound a lot better if I use this DAW. No, it's just a canvas to create your music. That's really all it is. And it's really all about finding one that fits your workflow. So hopefully that is helpful when describing what DAW to choose, where you are in your, you know, your journey when it comes to recording music. This video wasn't about like an in-depth breakdown on every DAW because there's a million videos like that out there. What I want to give you is the philosophy for choosing the right one and then maybe give you guidance for if you're looking to switch or choose a different DAW, how I can maybe help with that. So I thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Leave a comment down below. What DAW do you use? Why do you use it? What are the pros and cons of it? I'd like to hear people's thoughts. Maybe we can get a dialogue going about what DAWs people use and why. I'd really like to hear those recommendations. So leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Producer Podcast, and I will see you guys next time.